The Social Roots of Opportunism, 1916 Zinoviev is bitching about the German Social Democratic Party and that people have seemingly betrayed the revolutionary cause by becoming quote-unquote social chauvinists, by which he means that people, while still considering themselves socialists, starting doing the weird thing of loving the country they live in. I know. Horrifying. And the main problem and catalyst for this is opportunism. But why is socialism susceptible to discursive opportunism? He classifies two reasons for this. First one is that the party is filled with the so-called quote-unquote camp followers. Members of the bourgeoisie, usually petty bourgeoisie, who flock to socialist parties because they're generally unhappy with life and want radical social changes. This is a natural thing for them to do because socialists are the only party that cares for the people. But this is also a bad thing. It is a bad thing because in countries where everyone can vote, it becomes the norm to basically become populist, trying to appease as many voters as possible to gain the biggest reach possible. Because so socialism is good, non-working class people flock to it, and with them they bring all the bad things associated with the bourgeoisie, like thinking that revolution is bad. And eventually the number of these camp followers becomes so big that the social democracy has to adapt itself to them, appease these people or else they're not going to vote for them. They become the camp follower of camp followers, yes. And when they follow the will of non-working class people, the result is that the party stops being about the proletariat. This is why German social democrats deleted the workers from their name, mind you. Note that this can be a good thing though, because remember that there are many professions that are treated worse and have less pay than the industrial workers, so obviously they, the downtrodden, flock to the party that promises to defend the downtrodden. But this is also a bad thing, because these camp followers aren't ideologically indoctrinated, you see, so if one appeals to such insignificant things as patriotism or nationality, suddenly they start voting for that instead! This shocks and vexes the internationalist globalist, but the party, in Zinoviev's opinion, must remain a worker's one, that it should represent only the interest of the working class. Otherwise, what's the point? And you know what's gonna happen if you start excessively rely on these camp followers to get votes? The German Social Democrats is what happens. The imperialists appeal to the question of national interests and defense of fatherland and bish bash bosh socialist electorate flocked to them instead. It would be better to have only the votes of convinced socialists than try to appeal to the normies, because normies ruin everything. The second reason for this decline is the so-called labor bureaucracy basically members of the party that are not working class. People like sailors, coachmen, teachers, waiters, journalists, mechanists, artists, yes, they are not considered as working class. In fact, more often than not, the leadership of the party itself is not really of working class, and if they were, it was decades ago, and now their wages are often higher than of some middle class people, and they also hold a dozen or so positions in the party as well. People like this are the reason why opportunism takes root inside the party. They spread across the entire party, both the old and young wings, creating unimaginatively complex systems and functions that in turn require trained specialists to be able to navigate in them. Then he takes several pages of showing all of this in other socialist parties, showing that that the leadership of these parties are corrupt, vain, capitalist, and just evil. And what's most sad is that they often themselves don't understand that. It's not like they're cognizant of their betrayal of revolutionary interests. Not like that matters, though. Consciousness, after all, is conditioned by existence. So what are we to do about it? Well, first of all, remember that this is not the fault of democracy, as some people like to think. The rise of this system of managers and opportunists is done in spite of democracy, you see. And he continues to say this in different words and using different examples for the next several Paragraphs. God, this is so excruciating to read. All in all, what we need to remember is that a true socialist party must represent the workers only and must care about spreading the message into the masses over popular vote and always combat the opportunists and traitors. Whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> It's funny reading texts like these in the 21st century, especially as the problems described in this text have yet to be solved by the larger socialist movement. 